You're listening to the Head Hunting Housewives podcast with your recruiter, Diane O'Brien, episode number 71. Good morning, Head Hunting Housewives. It's your recruiter, Diane O'Brien. It is a beautiful June morning. It's a Tuesday, so I'm going to focus today on some tactical Tuesday stuff since I've been taking it easy uh, in summer mode. <laughs> um, but I am going to jump into something pretty good for you today to help you all um, that want to jump from contingent recruiting to retained. There's no better time to think through that than when you're on the beach this summer thinking about how you can improve your life as a recruiter. So we'll talk about that. Um, but literally, as I'm talking to you, I'm in my summer room this morning, as I typically am. And I think for those of you that listened to me in the last podcast, um, I've been trying to befriend this bird. Um, it's not a mockingbird. I'm not sure what kind of bird it is. It's not a blackbird. I think it's called like a, um, what was it called? I can't, my uh, catbird maybe, because it sounds like it's a meowing sound. But anyway, I've been watching her feed her babies for some time now. And I'm always kind of wishing she'll come over closer to me when I open my window here in the summer, it's right next to where she kind of sits on these little perches and bird baths outside. So we stare at each other on a daily basis. Um, but uh, but what's fun today is um, I'm looking at her. I'm wondering why she won't get closer to where I am. She's kind of scared. And then out of the blue, her little baby that I guess left the nest and is out flying around flew over to the windowsill, sat right next to me eyeball to eyeball, and just stared at me for about um, 40 seconds with the mom looking over. She was in her normal perch nearby, just watching the baby look at me and then flew away. So that's amazing. I know I sound like an old person here, but <laughs> when I'm up early watching the sunrise, there's not many friends around other than the rabbits and the squirrels and the birds. So <laughs> I thought I'd share that with you. Um, okay. But today what I want to focus on is, um, I want to I want you guys to think about going retained and I know a lot of you that have found me here or many of you are women in a different career and you're considering jumping into headhunting, right? And you want to be a headhunter and I'm kind of a safe way to learn about headhunting without having to go work for a recruiting company or work for corporate America. You know, all my work is virtual. This is, you know, a virtual headhunting field. That's why housewives love it. It's work from home. Um, you know, I've written that book years ago, work from home headhunter for the purpose of just easing you into read about a day in the life of a headhunter. Um, and at the time, I'm trying to think when I wrote that, that was back um, in 2014, I was already retained by them. But years before that, you know, I did contingent recruiting for many years, especially when I first started my business. Um, I started taking very small retainers early on, but didn't get the big retainers till much later. And I want you all to understand how to go after, um, you know, retained clients, that level of placement, and to become retained yourself. Because the only real difference, of course, once you have the knowledge, which I can help you with, or if you later go go to work for a retained search firm, you can learn that knowledge or have a mentor from a retained um, firm. And once you have the knowledge and you have the lingo a little bit down uh, more, and then you know how to do the work to go find someone on a retained level because it can take longer, um, it's really just you learning how to get those job placements. And that's really about learning how to, to speak the same lingo and build the kind of trust that's necessary for retained But more than anything, you have to be confident that you can do it, right? So I know my biggest blocker years ago when I was kind of a young contingent recruiter trying to jump to the retained world was really my confidence level because I just had never done it before. (laughs) And so you always have, whenever you jump from one level to the next, you always have this, well, who do I think I am or who am I to be doing this? And I went through those same fears. And in fact, you know, I want to speak to you a little bit about that just to help you jump over those fears. And, you know, many recruiters have to go through contingent and cut their teeth before going to retain. But that's not saying that for many of you, they're jumping from really good careers already um, in a very high level industry. And a lot of you women are already doing wonderful and making six figures in your own industry. But when I become a recruiter, if you're jumping from you know, engineering or software or a multitude of industries that you now want to recruit from in your retirement or just for a job change to be virtual, you can do that and jump into the retained level without having to go through all the contingent work. And I can kind of help you and, and teach you how to do that. 
Um, I think the one thing that I love about the people that I've mentored, um, you know, in the past, even recently, is that I have these connections now with retained search firms, um, the firms that I, you know, partner and, and or, or a co-founder with, and is able to give a nice foundation for you to learn. My company, SalesSource, um, you know, hires mostly all sales teams for companies. The company Kaplan that I've more recently in the past few years partnered with the um, owner on does only retained work, high-level executive VP and up, mostly CEO or CEO um, integrator type of work. Um, So both companies offer a very nice learning ground for you new um, retained recruiters that want to learn it, but actually practice in the real world to practice the skills on real clients. And that's what I like to do when I mentor someone. It's not about just teaching and training. And it's not like you you know, learn recruiting or learn retained recruiting come out after three months of working with me um, or my team to say, oh, look, here's a certificate or a diploma. I'm now a retained recruiter. No, no, no. That's not how it works, right? Not in the real world of recruiting. For you to come out in the world and say, I'm a retained recruiter, it's because you've been working on retained placements, retained searches. And when you make a retained placement, um, then you're a retained recruiter, right? Now you can start out becoming a retained sourcer, just like you've learned on the contingent side, you have to first learn to source candidates before you're, you know, recruiting and interviewing them before hiring, right? So it's the same process in retained. You can be a retained sourcer, um, for instance, whether it was for one of my companies or another um, retain search firm, cut your teeth there, learn how to work on a real job by sourcing real candidates and making a placement. And you can do that within a few months. I've had um, mentees that I've worked with that I thought would take three months because that's usually my typical training program. That's what the book Work From Home Headhunter is based upon a three month uh, plan. It's actually about 10 weeks, but we give a couple weeks in there for error <laughs> vacation. But it's, you know, within 10 weeks, they're able to place a real placement at any level. Um, but I have had mentees do that within a few weeks, shocking to my shocking surprise. And it was great because I get paid early, they get paid early. Um, so my point here is don't think you can't just take a quantum leap from wherever you are right into the retained world. Why not, right? You don't have to spend five years or seven, almost 10 years like I did before getting the big retainers. So let me talk a little bit, you know, about where um, the differences lie, because I know a lot of you on this general podcast that I put out, um, you could just be a housewife thinking about this or a recruiter that's only done contingent, you know, or you may be there already a, um, you know, six-figure recruiter that needs to get to retain and wants to go to your virtual online business. So I'll keep this general, but if I hear from you, which I hope I do, if you email us at hello at headhoneyhousewives.com, I'll make sure to separate you into the correct group. So you're getting the information that really helps you. I know that um, for a lot of you jumping into this, you know, you just need some basic tools for those of you that are already at 100K and want to go further, um, you're looking for even more detail in the conversations and how the calls go and how to build that trust and help with the clients, right? Getting the clients. So we will help you in the manner of where you are. <clears throat> but for this episode, I'm going to speak more generally speaking so you understand the retained search world. So the first thing, you know, and I've spoken this many times before, you understand that retained, you're getting a retainer upfront. Typically at the executive level, it's anywhere, you know, from 20 to 33%, a third, right? A third, a third, a third is how they cut it. Um, And I've always done 30% um, instead of 33, just because um, it was an easier percentage and just let it round off at the end. (laughs) But, um, and I've also done flat fees, but regardless, a retainer is something that you're going to get upfront before you start working the job versus contingent, you hear all about the job, you make a connection, and you start working it. You don't get paid until you place the person. The problem with that is um, the real problem is for the client, which they don't realize why retainer is better, especially at the higher level, is because it takes time for the recruiter to really focus on their job. And if you're a contingent recruiter to work the jobs you need to work to place the placements you need to make a good living, you're working several jobs at once, right? You might have five, six, ten, even more 
on your desk to make sure you're closing those contingent jobs. And I've worked and partnered with a lot of search firms that they only do contingent because they'll say right up, straight up to you that if they can't find the person after a month, they kind of get tired and bored of working it and they'll move on to another contingent job, right? There's no skin in the game for them. But with retained and what the beauty is, there is skin in the game on both sides. So not only are you going to put all the work in early on to learning exactly what your client wants and, you know, putting a good effort investing in the tools. I mean, with retained, you're investing in the expensive recruiting tools like the LinkedIn recruiter professional suite. These things cost, you know, four, five, 10, 15, 20,000. But if you're going to get 50,000, 60,000, 90,000 plus, you know, whatever it is, it's worth it to then put the time in and you work together until you get the job done. You agree on the methodology, you agree on the process. There's a lot of things we'll cover on the retained search groups that we'll run um, that will talk more about those kind of process maps and the profiling. It's all similar again to this regular old recruiting and contingent. We just go a lot deeper and we share a lot more of it with the client. We want to educate the client a lot more as we partner with them, you know, through the retained search process. So we'll cover all that later if that's where you want to go deeper. Um, but for here, you have to understand that's the big difference between contingent and retained. And retained is a beautiful thing because when you get there, you can take a lot less clients on. As you get better at it, you can start asking for more money. Now, if you're starting from the beginning, I'll tell you, to become retained, I remember, and this was a while back, I mean, I think I started my business in 03. I think I did that for three years. In many ways, I guess I was retained already when I first started because my first client, my employers kind of who helped set me up and I was getting a nice salary on a contingent when I was a contingent recruiter because he had like 10 managers. And so I was hiring for all of them nationally, but I was getting a nice flat salary, you know, six figure salary already from uh, my that one client or my employer at that time. Later, I switched to my own business so I could take on other clients, but then he was still retaining me. So it was a very nice segue. But then those managers later started their own businesses or actually evolved into um, higher level managers at other companies. And when they came back to me, they were very Leary, even knowing the work I've done in the past for them of giving me a retainer when they could find contingent recruiters a dime a dozen. And so to kind of start them not feeling too fearful, I went really low. It wasn't the, you know, a five, 10, 15, 20,000 retainer or a big percent. It was a thousand dollars, you guys. I remember for a thousand bucks, like, look, put a thousand dollars in the game just so I can like start helping you with your job description, right? Just to get the basics going, help figure out what your profile you're looking for. Let's spend some time assessing exactly what you need. And a lot of clients early on um, don't even want to put the time in to do that stuff, right? They just want you to find the person, but you can't find the person until you spend time invested into exactly what that person looks like. And you have to help your client figure that out or they'll run in circles for years and years, even at the executive level. I've seen this, right? I can think of a client that comes to mind right now that's still <laughs> searching, you know, kind of for certain um, level, executive level COO and such because they just can't dial that in. And you really want to be able to help them dial that in as quick as possible. Not all clients can be helped, hopefully most of them, but um, you can just lead a horse to water sometimes, right? So what you want to do is just make sure that you're really um, learning what that routine looks like, learning how to get your client there, and then taking them through the process. And again, I'll go a lot deeper into this, into our private group calls, but I feel like you need to be thinking of how you get the retained clients and thinking about being a retained recruiter. And again, that can start with starting small um, if you are you know, feeling comfortable there. For those of you that are coming from a very corporate background, maybe you've done recruiting or jumping into that executive level, you don't have to start small. Your contract terms can be right at that 33%, you know, a third, a third, a third, or if you want to do 25% or 30% and then round it off at the end. If you want to do a flat fee for certain clients because they feel more comfortable with that, fine, do an easy 20K. So it's, (coughs) excuse me, so it's 20, 20, 20. That's one that I really like to use, 20, 20, 20. I've done the past 15, 15, 15. So at the end, it's a 45 k or um, or it's 20, 20, 20, a 60 k or 30, 30, 30, 90 k right? Those are my typical ones. So I want you to understand what that look, look looks like, what the framework is, so you feel comfortable when you go there. And what I'll also talk about on other podcasts, I know I've focused a lot on confidence for you ladies because making these quantum jumps takes a lot of confidence. And so if I can help you an example that this is very possible to do, you know, you can make these leaps and help you. Um, I'll do more 
more podcasts too on the confidence to get there because so many of you, even executive women I help in corporate America, when it's time for the offer, you're willing to give up money. And often like, no, 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 you do not have to give up money. You're good at what you do. Stand strong. And I'm able to get those candidates, which are my clients, you know, 20, 30, 50,000 more or more in their salary. There's no reason I can't help you do the same thing as recruiters coming into this arena. Um, if you're only used to making five or 10K a placement and you want to jump in and make 15, 20, you know, we're able to figure out how to do that and show you how to do that because there are other recruiters doing that. So always know there's another recruiter out there already doing where you want to jump to. So if you can follow her lead, you know, hire a mentor to understand what is she doing different than me and then learn it, learn the lingo, learn the language, understand the contract terms, what the templates look like, then you can jump there and practice that, you know, on the daily or at least weekly and monthly to get there within a few weeks, you know, it might take 10 weeks, a few months, which is more typical, but people can jump there in a few weeks if you already have a big background of that. So I kind of jumped all over the place on this one. I apologize. It is summer. (laughs) I didn't make a strong outline, Um, but I wanted to talk retained recruiting. So again, for all you contingent recruiters or housewives wanting to learn recruiting, um, or women want to jump into the recruiting world, you know, I want you to set your sights on that as well, other than just contingent recruiting. And there's so much out there about that. So you can learn about that and um, and think about if that's where you want to go. Maybe this summer you can think on all this and then jump in full force in the um, in the September, uh, in the fall, which is when we kind of really get down the nitty gritty of it all. So I hope that is helpful, ladies. I'm going to go probably outside shortly and try to see if I can find this little baby bird again uh, before I start my day. Um, It's Tuesday, so I'll try to give you some more tactical information in the private groups as well today. Um, If not by Friday, I'll use more free tools. You all have that. And I wish all of you head hunting housewives a beautiful summer June Tuesday. Don't work too hard. Uh, Work hard, play hard, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come join us over at headhuntinghousewives.com. It's completely free to join. We're there to offer you guidance, support, inspiration. And when you're ready to go a little bit deeper, we're starting a mentorship program in 2Q. If that's for you, you have to email me at hello at headhuntinghousewives.com and let me know who you are and how I can help. Again, that's hello at headhuntinghousewives.com and I look forward to seeing you there.